Hello and welcome to the Room Centered Healing Podcast. I'm Jessica Huckabay and I have Kimberly here with me today again for a part two uh, as part of the um, Ancestral Healing Podcast series. Kimberly, Kimberly and I wanted to have a part two to dive deeper into the process of forgiveness uh, as, as a liberation, a self-liberation from, from victimization. And so, and, and talk about the roles of compassion um, and forgiveness in that process. So Kimberly, Kimberly I want to invite you to, um, we can just dive right in. You've told some of your story in your previous episode um, so please share with us about uh, how forgiveness and compassion have helped you in your healing process and your ancestral healing process. Okay, well, thank you again for bringing me on for round two. Um, I, you know, wanted to come back on and talk about that. I know we left off with, um, you know, we talked about some of my story as it related to um, self-abuse that I was inflicting um, due to the pain that I had I'd lived with and I hadn't healed from. So I wanted to and go on a positive note and talk about that liberation. And um, so what I wanted to talk about was about um, forgiveness and um, and what I had to do and with my own personal story, um, I had to, if you don't, just to touch base on my, on the last podcast, it was about alcoholism and how I had turned and had used alcohol as a crutch um, to kind of self-medicate through, through the pains that I was feeling and that I never expressed. And I just, it was a great place to like numb myself completely. So now just to up, just to keep, to get anybody else in this, in the story here, so now I'm almost six years sober and living a great life and I've done a lot of healing and, and everything's just so much better than it ever was in my entire life. It's a new beginning. It's a new life. It's an awakening um, in so many ways. And so, but what I had to do is um, after I stopped drinking, I had to look and I had to go to my childhood and I had to dive into um, looking at some of the, the memories and the going into the dark places and the places that hurt so bad and experiences that I remember that were, you know, really hard. And I had to, I had to face it all those years. I didn't want to face it, you know, because it was too painful. So I had to sit with it and, um, I had to look at it and I had to, um, find a way to forgive the people, the person, the people, that had inflicted this trauma upon me. And um, I, I used to think I don't wanna forgive because they don't deserve being forgiven. But that's not true. Mm. Everybody deserves forgiveness and we can all change. Yeah, I'm a perfect example of that. So, but for me, I needed to find forgiveness for myself. Mm. And I had to look at the people. And one of the ways to do this, and I've done this all my life was to be able to put myself in the shoes of somebody else who might be acting out in a physical or a violent or emotionally disturbing or um, in a way that not really the best way of expressing yourself, you know, um, and find out why, you know, and look at them and think, why are they acting like this? What happened in their day for them to treat me like this? Or, and this isn't just in my child, but this is just in general, what happened in in their lives that they are acting this way. And every time I've done that in my whole entire life, it comes back to me seeing somebody who's wounded. It comes back to me seeing somebody who's had pain brought upon them through whatever, whether it was their parents, whether it was family, whether it was friends, neighbors, whatever, they've had some trauma and they hadn't faced it, you know? and so in order to heal this um, bondage, this generational bondage it can be, or this trauma, we have to feel it. You can't, you can't heal it unless you feel it. And the only way you're going to feel it is if you look at it. And so I had, to, I had to look at this. 
And then I had to look at these people and find forgiveness. And oh, once I, um, you know, once I found forgiveness for them, then it just released so much from me. And now those stories, those memories, those childhood, those things come up here and there that they're never, they're not forgotten. They'll still surface but they don't have the same energy attached to them, which is that triggering hook for me to feel like a victim. Mm -hmm. You know, the things that once had me would just in a second, just have me just, you know, in so much pain. Now they don't. Now it's, I can look at it and I can send this person or people love behind it. I say prayers for them. I send love to them. I'm not waiting for an apology. I don't expect one. Um, I used to sit and kind of wait thinking that one day I would get it, but I don't anymore and I don't need it. You know, I've, I've forgiven them and um, that's been huge and crucial in, in my life. Um, and um, it doesn't excuse the person or absolve the person or people from the pain they inflicted upon us. It doesn't, by any means, I'm not justifying the behavior of somebody who has, you know, done something ill to us. That it's not it, it's, it's just that in order for me to heal, I had to find the forgiveness. And um, as, as I've done that, then that's cleared the way for me to have more meaningful relationships um, with other people and obviously more self-love and um, and stand up and rise up and um, not be defined in my head by that story or those stories that once kept me as a victim and now I'm a warrior. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's a much better place to be. Mm. Um, you know, yeah. I just want to highlight because you talked about recognizing that when someone is hurting me all right it's probably because they've been hurt mm -hmm. and having compassion for that like wow why would somebody behave that way oh it's because they were hurt mm -hmm. and when we extend that compassion a little bit farther back and this is the process of ancestral healing not only for our own family members but for anyone yeah because as we extend that, okay, well, who hurt them? Mm -hmm. Probably it wasn't just whoever hurt them today. Right. Oh, that no. pattern, just like for each of us, the patterns of hurt that we see in our lives, like there's not just one hurt today. It's that hurt probably hurts so bad because there's an unhealed wound from being hurt repeated times in similar ways throughout our childhood yeah. and why were they why were they hurt so many times throughout their childhood and through their throughout their adulthood who was hurting them yeah and why were they hurting them mm -hmm. because they were hurt and who hurt them mm -hmm. and so as we start to expand our compassion by really seeing that there's this collective illness of hurt people hurting people <laughs> and not being able to heal not having uh, frameworks or acceptance or abilities to heal not having the resources or even like you know it's only this our generation that has had access to or or even acceptance of therapeutic modalities as a, as a valuable part of life. Yeah. Previous generations um, and even people still in our generation hold on to those beliefs that going to see a therapist is a sign of weakness mm. or that therapy isn't, isn't going to get you anywhere anyway, which sometimes is, is true depending on the kind of therapy that you're having and the kind of wounding that you're dealing with it may not be the right fit. So it, we're, we're just like babies in our development collectively of how to heal from the kind of wounding that we're suffering from and the collective illness that if we extend our compassion out, it's like, oh my goodness, 
it's not just me. It's, it's everyone that's ever hurt me and everyone who's ever hurt them. We're just this, this wave upon wave of generations of people that have been hurt by other people. And what a powerful thing to say it stops here. And there's more and more people are getting to that place of saying, you know what, I don't want to do this. And the mystery to me, it's this huge mystery as to what awakens in one person with the same collective wounding leading up to how I'm living my life or you're living your life. And at certain points saying, no, I'm not going to keep doing this. Whereas there's all these other people that haven't haven't gotten to that point yet there's just a mystery as to what gets a person to that point yeah saying no it's got to stop here it's a big huge mystery and you talked in your last uh, episode your you know your first episode before this one about you know getting to uh the bottom of the barrel and and finding um you know a miraculous connection to healing and I've met people who will tell a story like that, but they're still abusing people egregiously. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, that there's there's probably processes of healing where, you know, there's layers like, oh, you get to that point of of saying, gosh, I've really got to heal. And you have an opening and, and you think you do a layer of healing. And then you realize later on that, wow, I, even though I stopped that way of abusing others and abusing myself, I was still abusing myself and others. And now I'm going to, now I have another layer of healing that I'm going to do. Um, <laughs> but I just, it's such a mystery to me, this whole healing process of, you know, and I really appreciate how, how, how you've simplified it and, and said, you know what, it's just, I need to forgive myself. I need to forgive these hurt people that hurt me and that liberates me and that puts me in a place of the possibility of healing and that's such a a miracle given how how many of us and how many lifetimes uh never got to that point yeah and so i just want to celebrate that that miracle Mm, thank you Mm -hmm. thank you um yeah you know that's that's the funny or not funny haha thing but there was the um me looking at other people thinking well I don't do that I don't do that and I mentioned this in my last one I don't hurt people and I don't and yet I would go home and drink a bottle or two bottles or three bottles of wine you Mm -hmm. know so I was hurting myself Mm -hmm. and um so other people would explode and I was very non-confrontational would just Mm -hmm. take it all and keep it inside mm-hmm. so I was imploding or I was I would say kimploding you know ah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um I would I yeah I just held it all in here so my way you know keeping it all to myself wasn't better by any means better than the person the person exploding um there's got to be a balance there's got to be a way that we figure out how to heal it so we're not doing either you mm-hmm. know because the self hurt is, well, obviously it's, it's a terrible thing, just like hurting others is terrible too. So I've learned now to love myself and I've always seemed to have a love for others, even in the face of a lot of that turmoil and stuff that carried on. Um, yeah, so no more Kim ploding and uh, <laughs> for sure no <laughs> explosive behavior. Um, find so what what is there instead for you like if you're not holding all your feelings inside till you implode mm-hmm. or if you're not exploding and pouring you know putting all of your difficult feelings out on others in an abusive way what is the other option there's walking in nature there's meditation there's um, talking about these things there's great great conversations with other people in regard to these things. Um, one of them is my daughter, but you know, I, I love to talk about this and I open up 
as much as possible to share my story or to share this information with other people. But um, it's doing stuff, it's, it's taking care of myself now. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like I said, exercise and, and um, just healthy relationships, healthy behaviors, um, um, living good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in other modalities, I guess, you know, things that I've sought out, like I mentioned before, Reiki and um, sound healing and putting my immersing myself in with people such as yourself that um, want to make change and people that are um, on the same kind of footing as me. And like I associate myself with with a positive group of loving, connected people. So that just feeds me back the same thing that I'm putting out, which is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. And, and, and so there's like many modalities that help us to um, feel the feelings that we need to feel, find the wisdom in those feelings, um, release the stress and the strain, um, discharge the biochemical reactions to stress, um, the, the trauma patterns that get sort of programmed and hardwired into our bodies. Yeah. There's uh, many modalities, uh, you know, body centered modalities that help to discharge that and that healing can um, deepen layer by layer of gosh, releasing health patterns, Ill, patterns of, of disease and ill health that that take um, take hold in our bodies from, you know, childhood trauma and inherited trauma of uh, trauma patterns can, you know, create um, uh, disease in our bodies that get yeah. that gets passed down. So um, that for me, the modalities that are super helpful to me our body centered modalities like yoga and therapeutic dance and breathing that and sound vocal sounding you know, there's a kind of a difference between listening to someone else making therapeutic sound and making this therapeutic sound with your own voice making it your with your own voice um, activates your own vocal healing process where your own voice becomes a healing instrument within your own body, which gets in a little deeper than listening to somebody yeah. else making music, making a therapeutic sound, not, not bashing that at all. That's a really wonderful way to do it as well. But, but I, I like that making my own therapeutic sound, right. And combining that with the breathing and all of that, it really um, helps us to rewire our nervous systems and our whole, all of our systems for well-being. So, um, yeah, and, and and it's really on the cutting edge. And and to speak a little bit um, about the healing arts community, um, you know, I've been involved in healing arts, cutting edge healing arts communities for most of my adult life. And oh my goodness, there's so much unresolved trauma flying around and hurt people hurting people, even within that community. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, because nobody really knows what we're doing. And a lot of ple people claim to know what they're doing and then yeah. <laughs> claim that they know what they're doing and then charge a ton of money uh, to people for people to, to learn what they're doing. And, and you know, there's just, oh, that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I just want to mention that we're all just um, exploring here. And yes, I've developed healing modalities that that work for me in a very unique way. Um, but I can't guarantee that it's going to work for other people, you know, and so I just like to make it really clear that we're all just experimenting yeah. about how to heal this huge collective dis-ease and illness that we're all suffering from anybody who claims to know how to do that it's like mm, this Come is too we're big learning. yeah we're learning it's we're peeling good. back layers every That's day right. every yeah sorry yeah. I interrupted you. Yeah. yeah no it's okay it's great uh, uh, for a little conversation here so having compassion for that 
and forgiveness for that as well, because as we're going through the healing process for ourselves, for myself personally, you know, there are layers and I'm bound to discover more difficult layers, even after, you know, a period of time yeah. of feeling like, yeah, I succeeded. I got I've got it. Right. And then you like find another layer, another um, compartment of something that was hidden away. Yeah. Oftentimes it's when we feel the most, like <laughs> the greatest sense of safety and stability that we've ever had that the most that the, the next layer of deeply hidden pain yeah. that, that couldn't surface until we got to that layer mm -hmm. of safety uh, feels able to arise yeah. I'm constantly telling my husband like you know something will be coming up for one of us and and he'll say but we were doing so well I'm like well it's because we're doing so well that this thing that's coming up is feels safe enough and stable enough we're to ready. come up for us yeah. to tend to you know we have the the food we need we have the you know resources we need we have the support we need ah. yeah and then and then it can it can come up in that sigh of relief right yeah so yeah well you got me going there is yeah. there anything else you wanted to share about this process in the last few minutes here? As a matter of fact, there is. Um, I wanted to share this uh, great um, experience I had while getting a massage. Um, and it was probably the best massage of my life. And I don't, you know, it was a good massage, but the stuff that went on in it. So I'll just share. So in my massage, I managed to envision, and I don't know that I did this intentionally. I don't remember. But um, I managed to envision all of my ancestors around, um, well, some, some family members still living and a lot of them passed on and moved on to the other side. So we were in this big circle, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, we were all joined hands and it was a huge circle of us, but we weren't joined hands, holding hands, we were connected by chains. So, you know, two hands were connected together and all the way around by, by chain. And um, I was, for some reason, which I'm really happy that I was, I was able to get free, or maybe I didn't start in that chain. I got in the middle of the circle of, of the whole family. And I was able to go to each and every one of them and stop and look them in their eyes and tell them that I forgave them. And I was, you know, there was a moment of just looking at them, acknowledging them, acknowledging whatever they went through, not through verbal, there wasn't a big discussion or anything, acknowledging there were tears shed, there were hugs, and I would go on to the next person and I forgave them. And I also apologized for any, anything that I needed to have, anything that I should be letting go of too, for the self abuse, for anything else that I was responsible for in this uh, generational or ancestral, um, you know, curse in a sense. I don't know if curse is the right word, but so I went to each one. We hugged, we embraced, I forgave them and I released them. And I told them that I told each and every one of them that they were free to go. If they were hanging out, if they were still staying by because they felt that they didn't do good enough or they should have done something differently or they were in pain because of the way they handled or didn't handle a situation that none of that was being they, that they could go they were released i forgave them please fly away and go and after that um it was very emotional and there was great connection and oh, it was amazing i walked back and i got in the circle and we all joined hands and now the chains dropped all the chains fell and where the two hands connected it, it shaped it looked like a heart mm. I can kind of so now, yeah, so now what was attaching us by chains of bondage and abuse and, and all of that pain and suffering was now connecting us by the heart and by the way we were all brought into this world and the way we were bonded, not in bondage, not through our pain and suffering anymore, but we were bonded through the heart and connected together as a family of love. Mm what a beautiful vision 
yeah, it's so, so powerful that we can receive these kinds of healing visions uh, through reaching for connection with our ancestors and through visionary meditation processes like the one you described. Um, I just, that's, I love uh, facilitating, participating in, um, supporting each other with, you know, returning to these um, ceremonial spaces where we can find our way back to, to that family of, of love, of connection. So thank you so much for sharing that vision with us today. And I think we're going to wrap it up now. Uh, can you remind listeners if they want to get in touch with you, how they might do so? Yes, um, I can be found on Facebook. Um, my name is Kimberly Donnelly, and I um, am a Reiki practitioner. I practice Reiki, and I combine with crystals, sound healing, and aromatherapy. Mm. and um, as well as open to all the discussions that need to be had um, in regards to ancestral healing and generational trauma healing. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your beautiful healing process. Um, and again, I just am, am celebrating the, the miraculous nature of, of healing and forgiveness through compassion um may we all find that within us and experience those kinds of miracles on our healing journey amen thank all you right. jessica thank, thank you. you all right that's all for now until next time take good care okay you too bye-bye